All right. Um, welcome, everyone, to the uh, One World Combinatorics Onwards seminar. Uh, our speaker today is uh, Lubomira Dorakova. She's uh, going to speak to us about string attractors and pseudopalindromic closures. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, thank you for this opportunity to give uh, a talk on this topic. Uh, I will speak about string attractors of factors of uh, in infinite words, I will call them sequences, uh, that are uh, generated by either palindromic or antipalindromic closures. And uh, yeah, you will see uh, what the results are. Okay. So uh, first of all, I will uh, recall the definition of a string attractor, and I will also recall known results which uh, belong to the field of combinatorics onwards, because otherwise string attractors come from the field of data compression, but I will not uh, touch this domain. Then uh, I will speak about uh, attractors and palindromic closures, in particular, um, it will be devoted to epistromian sequences, then uh, about attractors and antipalindromic closure, which uh, which will cover the so-called pseudostandard sequences. And then uh, I will say what we are able to uh, what we are able to present concerning attractors and pseudopalindromic closure, uh, which means that we are combining both of those closures, palindromic and antipalindromic. And in particular, we in this case we were able to uh, to have results for uh, rota sequences, which are also obtained this way. And uh, in the end, I will uh, present some problems that remain open. So let me start with the definition of a string attractor. But uh, at first, uh, I will uh, define what I understand under an occurrence. Uh, so let V uh, be a finite word and Z uh, be its factor. Uh, now I say that uh, I, I plus one up to J, so the indices here, that the set of uh, all these indices is an occurrence of Z in V. Uh, usually we understand under an occurrence only the first index here. So now uh, using this uh, definition, uh, I recall the definition of a string attractor by Kempa and Retza from 2018. And uh, again, consider a finite word. And uh, then I say that uh, gamma, a subset of uh, indices here, 0, 1, up to n, is a string attractor, or I will usually say just attractor for sure, uh, is an attractor of V. If each factor of V has an occurrence that contains an element of gamma. Okay, so let me explain uh, this notion uh, on an example. Let me consider uh, V over a finite alphabet over the alphabet 0, 1, 2, 3. So V is this word. And here uh, in the first case, I claim that uh, gamma 1 is an attractor. So uh, just let me underline that I number the positions from zero. So this is the position zero, one, two, and here. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So I underlined here the positions of, uh, of the attractor. So let me explain that it indeed is an attractor of this word V. Yes, it is. Uh, in order to uh, in order to see that, it's sufficient to check whether the factors uh, which are not underlined, whether they uh, have an occurrence containing a position from the attractor. So here, first, the factors of length 1, 0, 1, and 2, they have, an they have a position, uh, an occurrence containing a position from attractor because they are underlined here, okay, 0, 1, 2. Then there are factors of length 2, 0, 1, which is uh, also here. So yes, it does have an occurrence containing, uh, for instance, the position zero. And uh, here we, we have another factor of length two, one, two, which occurs as well here. So you can also see that it, yes, it has an occurrence containing a position of this attractor. 
And the last one, zero, one, two, this factor of length three is uh, again here. It has uh, such an occurrence, so it crosses uh, zero, one, two, uh, all three positions from this attractor. So yes, this is an attractor. And uh, here uh, we have another one. So the attractor is not uh, unique. Even the minimum size attractor is not unique because in this case, these two attractors, they are of minimum size. Uh, you can uh, easily observe that each attractor is at least of the same size as uh, the alphabet uh, of the considered word. So in this case, four. So this is the definition. And now uh, let me remark an important observation that the size of minimal attractor is not monotone. So it means that uh, it can happen that you have a word which is a factor of another one. So it happens here because the second word, you obtain that word if you add a one and zero to the end. And now uh, here, uh, this, this word has attractors of size at least three because you can see that one, one, this factor, zero, one, and zero, zero, these are three factors that occur exactly once there and uh, their occurrences are disjoint. So your attractor here must uh, be of size at least three because uh, it has to touch all those factors. And uh, on the other hand, in this enlarged word, uh, what happens is that an attractor of size two is sufficient. We can again check that uh, each letter is uh, crossing the attractor, then zero one is repeated here. So it has an occurrence uh, crossing the attractor. One zero, one zero is here again. And uh, then zero one zero, this uh, factor is here again. So again, it crosses the attractor. So now after these uh, simple observations, let me summarize what is known about attractors in combinatorics onwards. So uh, first of all, in general, it's difficult to find an attractor uh, of random words. It's, a, it's known to be an NP-complete problem. But uh, in combinatorics onwards, uh, when you use some particular proper properties of your words, then, uh, then uh, it is treatable. And uh, the following results uh, have been obtained so far. So uh, attractors of minimum size have been determined for some particular prefixes. Then I will say something about prefixes and factors. Uh, let me just uh, highlight here that if you know attractors, if you consider an infinite word, a sequence, and uh, you know attractors of infinitely many particular prefixes, then since the minimum size of uh, attractors is not monotone, you can't uh, say anything about prefixes in general. And the same thing, if you know attractors of all prefixes, it does not mean that you know attractors of all factors. So this is like uh, the easiest problem, the first one, then the more difficult problem and the most difficult problem for factors. So what is known uh, for particular prefixes of standard Sturmian sequences, or they are also called characteristic Sturmian sequences. Uh, it was determined by Manta, Chirestivo, Romana, Rosone, and Shortino in 2021 uh, that attractors uh, of size two are sufficient for so-called uh, finite Sturmian words. Uh, which are uh, prefixes of uh, standard Sturmian sequences. Then uh, another result concerns, another of like the first results concerning attractors is the result for the tumor sequence, uh, where particular prefixes were observed by Kutsukake and his colleagues, and uh, they determined that the size is, uh, is four in general, uh, the, the size of the minimum uh, attractor. Then for prefixes, 
uh, the, the result uh, by Mantachi et al. was uh, then generalized for all prefixes of standard Strumian sequences by Restivo, Romana, and Shortino a, a year later. And uh, then uh, Luke Sheffer and Jeffrey Shalit, they studied in their paper from uh, 2021, they studied automatic sequences and they determined, uh, they determined the minimum size attractors for all prefixes of the Tribonacci sequence, of the tumor sequence, of the period doubling sequence, and uh, the powers of two sequence. And uh, this is uh, like a, a summary for prefixes and what is known for factors. Uh, so this is uh, not, not probably too much studied problem so far. So uh, there's a result by Francesco Dolce, uh, who presented that in uh, Umea in Sweden and this year. And he uh, showed that for factors, if you consider all factors of the tumor sequence, then the attractors will be of size. Uh, they, they will be of the minimum size attractors will be of size up to five. So this is a summary of known results. And let me mention some more uh, like studied things concerning attractors. Uh, Schaeffer and Shalit, they also in, in their paper, they studied automatic sequences. They uh, gave results uh, concerning the construction of attractors, of minimum size attractors uh, of prefixes. And they also considered the asymptotic behavior uh, for both for attractors of of prefixes of automatic sequences and also minimum size attractors of linearly recurrent sequences. And then uh, let me mention some more results from this paper by Restivo Romana Shortino. Uh, they, they studied also combinatorial properties of attractors uh, like the relation to factor complexity or to recurrence function, or they also define there some more possible measures like uh, span or leftmost, uh, leftmost attractor. And they uh, studied also attractors in fixed points of morphisms. And uh, uh, another recent result is uh, by Franz uh, Gerard, uh, Giuseppe Romana, and Manon Stipulanti from this year. They presented that also in Umea in Sweden. And uh, they studied attractors in uh, fixed points of Cape Bonacci like morphisms. And uh, uh, let me once more uh, underline that here I will not speak about any connection to data compression, but there's a nice talk. Uh, that Giuseppe Romana gave a year, exactly a year ago, uh, called String, String Attractor, a combinatorial object from data compression. And uh, here in his talk, he uh, mentioned a bit uh, the connection to data compression, and also he presents uh, in details his uh, the results of uh, himself and his colleagues. So this is, uh, this is for known uh, facts, uh, known results about uh, attractors. And now uh, let me go to my topic. So now I will speak about, uh, again, attractors, minimum size attractors of, uh, of um, some particular prefixes or sometimes prefixes, sometimes factors in uh, sequences which are obtained by palindromic and antipalindromic closure. So now I have to define what I mean by palindromic closure. And in order to do that, I have to recall what reversal means and what exchange antimorphism means. I need exchange antimorphism later for defining antipalindromic closure. So first, reversal is a map on a finite words. Uh, over a finite alphabet. And uh, it is such a map that uh, associates uh, with a word its mirror image. And uh, an ex exchange antimorphism, that's a, that's a map, uh, this time over, a, over binary words. And uh, it is defined by the following. It, it associates with a word 
it's mirror image, but mirror image where moreover, you exchange zeros with ones and one ones with zeros. So this uh, this stripe here, overline, it means that you change zero to one and um, vice versa. And uh, I say then that a word W is a palindrome if it is equal to its reversal. And uh, W is an antipalindrome if it is equal to its E image. And a word is a pseudopalindrome if it is either a palindrome or an antipalindrome. So now some illustrations. Uh, if you take this word over a binary alphabet, you can see that it stays the same if you read it backwards. So it is a palindrome. And here, if you take this word and read it backwards and change each one to zero and each zero to one, then you obtain zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one. So you obtain this word. And yes, it is the same one. So it, it is an antipalindrome. Now I can say what the palindromic closure means. So well, let W be a word. Then I denote by W, w to R the shortest palindrome with the prefix W. And I call this the palindromic closure of W. So for instance, uh, if you take this word, it is already a palindrome. So the palindromic closure is the same. The shortest palindrome containing 000, zero, zero as prefix. Now, if you take 0001, zero, zero, the short, and you make the palindromic closure, the shortest palindrome containing 0001 zero, 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 as prefix is this one. And if you take here uh, this word and make the palindromic closure, then in fact, you, you can observe that 010 is already a palindrome. So it stays here and you just copy this zero to the end. And now uh, there's a definition by Drupal Justin Pirillo from 2001, saying that if you take a sequence of letters and define uh, U0 to be the empty word and then UN plus one, to be the palindromic closure of UN followed by the corresponding letter from this uh, so-called directive sequence, then, uh, then the resulting word is uh, denoted U of delta, and it is the sequence that has uh, all UNs as its prefix. And uh, so this is what I understand under a sequence that is obtained by palindromic closures. And what's the connection of this U of delta to Sturmian and then at the Sturmian sequences, there's a close connection. So let me show first that, or show, let me in, introduce to you a result saying that if you take for delta for your directive sequence, if you take the sequence of 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, repeated infinitely many times, then this construction gives you uh, the Fibonacci sequence. So let us check uh, for the first six prefixes that they indeed are prefixes of the Fibonacci sequence. So U0 is the empty word, but then U1, you take this zero from the directive sequence, the first letter, and you make the palindromic closure. So it stays the same. Then here, in order to construct U2, you take U1, so zero. Then you take the second letter, so one, from your directive sequence, and you make the palindromic closure. Okay, then uh, to construct U3, uh, next prefix of the Fibonacci sequence, you take U2, so zero, one, zero. You read zero in your directive sequence, and you make the palindromic closure. Then U4, again, you take U3, so you copy 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and now you read one here, and you make the palindromic closure. And those ones who, uh, who knows by heart the Fibonacci sequence can immediately see that, yes, this is a prefix, and we can continue like that, and you can believe that you will obtain the Fibonacci sequence. And in general, 
uh, there's a uh, strong relation to epistermian sequences. So let me first say that uh, if uh, that the definition of an epistermian sequence. So let you be a sequence. Uh, whose language is closed under reversal, and moreover such that for each n, for each length n, it contains at most one left special factor. By a left special factor, I mean a factor uh, with uh, at least two left extensions. So you can find uh, such a factor in your uh, sequence preceded by at, at least two distinct letters. And uh, then such a sequence is called an epistermian sequence. And uh, moreover, an epistermian sequence is called standard if all left special factors are prefixes. So now the connection to, to the, to the uh, sequences obtained by uh, palindromic closures, the connection is, uh, the relation is the following one, again shown by Drubajistan Pirillo. Uh, that if U is a standard epistermian sequence over a finite alphabet, then uh, U will be obtained by palindromic closures exactly for one, for a unique uh, directive sequence. So uh, this is how we uh, construct, how we can construct uh, standard epistermian sequences. And now let me uh, stop here for, for a moment uh, then and, uh, and say something about uh, my first uh, touch with, uh, with uh, attractors. Uh, when I read the paper by uh, Giuseppe Romana and his colleagues, where they construct uh, the minimum size attractor for uh, finite Sturmian, um, finite um, standard Sturmian words, uh, I could see that they did, they did not use, at that time, they did not use the palindromic closure. And I said to myself that uh, to use palindromic closure, it could be quite useful because when you construct your sequence by palindromic closures, if we can go back to uh, show it to you, then what happens here? Uh, you have UN, which is a palindrome, and then you make the palindromic closure and your UN will be not only the prefix, but also the suffix of un plus one. So you can imagine that uh, there's a close re relation between the, the attractor of un and the attractor of un plus one. And uh, so I said to myself uh, that I would like to try to use the palindromic closure to see what happens for uh, prefixes, palindromic prefixes of standard Sturmian sequences. And yes, I could see that I am able to obtain um, attractors of minimum size. And then uh, I could also see that it's not difficult to generalize the results to, to all factors of, uh, of uh, Sturmian sequences. And again, then there was uh, just a, a fluent step to go further to Epistermian sequences by the same uh, techniques. So let me now present uh, those results. So uh, I have the following theorem for first uh, uh, non-empty palindromic prefixes of standard epistermian sequences. So let V be such a prefix, palindromic prefix, a non-empty one. Then uh, for each letter, I find the uh, longest palindromic prefix of V, which is followed by this letter. And then, uh, I claim that uh, the attractor of minimum size is uh, formed by the lengths of such uh, palindromic prefixes. And yes, it is a minimal, minimal, minimal attractor, attractor of minimum size, because uh, the, its size corresponds to the number of letters in V. And uh, let me uh, illustrate this, uh, illustrate this theorem on an example. I will take for my example the Tribonacci sequence. So uh, the Tribonacci sequence is generated by the directive sequence equal to 0, 1, 2, repeated infinitely many times. So first, uh, U1, uh, U1, uh, when you look at the palindromic prefixes followed by letters from U1, 
Then there is only the empty prefix followed by the letter zero. The empty prefix has the length zero, so zero is the position of the attractor. And uh, I, I recall that I number the positions from zero. Then U2, I search for the minimum, for the, uh, sorry, maximum, maximal palindromic prefix followed by zero. That's again the empty prefix. So this is, this will be, zero will be the, the position of the attractor. And then the longest prefix palindromic followed by one. In this case, it is this zero. So the length is one and I underline this position. So I have zero, one as positions of the attractor. Then I go to U3 and again, I search for the longest palindromes followed by zero, one and two. What happens is that uh, the palindromes followed by zero and one, the longest one, they stay the same. So these are the positions of the attractor. And here's uh, the longest palindrome followed by two. So I underline this two here. And then you can now imagine what happens further uh, because uh, I will copy U3 here. And then uh, the next letter from the directive sequence will be zero. So the longest palindromic prefixes followed by one and two, they will stay the same. And there will be a new uh, longest palindromic prefix followed by zero. So this zero will be a position from the attractor. And then again, what happens? I copy U4 and I write down a new letter from the directive sequence, which is one in this case. So uh, two positions of the attractor will stay the same. This will be the co positions corresponding to the longest palindromic prefix followed by two and followed by zero. And then there will be a new, new position, this one, etc. So it cyclically repeats uh, since this uh, sequence is periodic. So this is about uh, palindromic prefixes of uh, standard Epistermian sequences. But uh, as I mentioned, it was not difficult to generalize these results to factors. I will mention that later, but let me now uh, show also the proof, uh, but not in uh, its uh, whole generality, but just for standard Sturmian sequences. This will be the only proof that I will present because I find it uh, like sufficiently uh, understandable, sufficiently short. So uh, for a standard Sturmian sequence, uh, I would like to show that a minimal attractor of UN, so each uh, palindromic prefix is of this form, it is a certain UN. So uh, for each such uh, prefix, the attractor will be uh, will, will be the uh, formed by the length of the longest palindromic prefixes followed by the letters from UN. So, uh, how do I show this? I will proceed by mathematical induction on N. And let me assume without loss of generality that my directive sequence starts in zero. So in this case, U1 is a zero. And yes, this is an attractor. It corresponds to this definition, to this, uh, this form. Then we go to uh, N greater than or equal to two. And uh, how do we construct uh, how do we construct the prefixes? UN is equal to the palindromic closure of UN minus one followed by the corresponding letter from the directive sequence. And there are three possible forms uh, of uh, UN. So either UN is exactly equal to this, uh, this thing here, this uh, word, but this happens only so the, you obtain a palindrome here only if uh, the same palindrome, only if uh, this is just composed by zeros. When you think about the, how the palindromic closure works, then this is clear. So you have n times uh, zero here. And uh, according to this, uh, to the description of the attractor, it says that the attractor is the, it corresponds to the length of the longest palindromic prefix followed by zero. So it is this zero. And yes, of course, this is the attractor of this word. So this was the trivial situation. The second one, which is trivial, 
uh, is uh, when you obtain, when the palindromic closure is the longest possible one. This happens only in case where u n minus one is uh, only a, a string formed by zeros and a is one. So in this case, this is your resulting word. And uh, what I say here, I say that the attractor will be the longest palindromic prefix followed by zero, which will be this zero. And then the longest palindromic prefix followed by one, which will be this one. So yes, you can check that this is indeed is an attractor of this word. And now uh, we will have the most uh, most the complicated case where u uh, un is un minus one followed by a. Now let me assume without loss of generality that a is zero, and uh, we make the palindromic closure. So what happens now when uh, when we are um, when we have a case that is different from the previous two ones? The following thing ha happens when you make the palindromic closure, then you take the longest palindromic suffix of the word un minus one, which is preceded by zero, and uh, you your closure will be u zero, p zero, and here the reverse, the reversal of u. So this is by the definition of the palindromic closure, the, the result will be like this. And now this is equal to u n minus one. Okay, this this thing here is u n minus one, then zero, and r of a certain word u. And uh, at the same time, this is a palindrome, so it will be also um, or yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, it will be also equal to what to its reversal. This is a palindrome, and the the reversal is u, I will read here the reversal, so it is u, 0, p, 0, and r of u. So this is the reversal. And uh, since it is a palindrome, u n minus 1, which is this part, is also a suffix of the, uh, of the word. So now this, these uh, ideas, they, they were just uh, given by the palindrome closure. And uh, since we are not in the first, neither in the second case, u is non-empty and it is smaller than uh, u n minus one. And it is a suffix of u n minus one. Uh, no, sorry, it is a prefix of u n minus one. So now uh, I want to show that uh, u n has the, has the attractor of, the for, of this form and I assume that uh, u n minus one has already a factor of this form. I now I prove that by induction. So uh, assume that m zero and m one is an attractor of u n minus one, where this m zero and m one means that I have a m zero is the length of the longest palindrome followed by zero. And M1 is the, the length of the longest, sorry, palindromic prefix of U n minus one followed by one. And now I want to explain that this and M1 is the attractor of U n. So this U n minus one, why? This U n minus one, according to the construction, it is the longest palindromic prefix followed by zero of U n. So it corresponds to, to this description. It is the longest palindromic prefix followed by zero. And M1 is the longest palindromic prefix followed by one because it is the same in UN minus one and in UN. And in UN minus one, I denoted with the length by M1. So now let me explain that is this indeed is an attractor. Why? Uh, if you take any factor of UN, then what can happen? Either, either uh, your factor crosses this zero, it is fine because it means that it crosses this position of the attractor or of the, of the attractor or of the set uh, for which I am proving it is an attractor. 
or it is completely contained in UN minus one because it is contained here or here, but R of U is a suffix of UN minus one. So uh, if it is contained, if your factor is contained in UN minus one, then either it crosses the position M1, it crosses the attractor of UN minus one, so either the position M1, but that is fine because it cor corresponds to this uh, position, or it crosses the position M0. But what means M0? M0 means the length of the longest uh, palindrome, palindromic prefix followed by zero. And now, uh, let me look at this uh, occurrence of UN minus one. And here, P is at the same time the longest palindromic prefix and the longest palindromic suffix followed or preceded by zero. So the position M0, the position M0 in UN minus one is in UN, it, it, it is uh, also the position, uh, so M0, the length of the palindrome here uh, corresponds to this, uh, this underlined zero. So in other words, if your factor from UN, if it crosses the position M0 in UN minus one, then you will find it here in US minus, UN minus one crossing this position. But this position, I underlined it everywhere, this position, it corresponds to this one. So it is the length of UN minus one. And that's it. Uh, to summarize your factor crosses either this or this position. <laughs> okay, so hopefully mm, you, you are not completely confused by that. Uh, so uh, just to give you an idea of the proofs and uh, such a proof, exactly the same proof, but in more general uh, case uh, was doable for epistermian sequences uh, for palindromic prefixes. And now, uh, we, I have also the theorem for factors. So then I was able to generalize that for epistermian sequences. So I was able to show that each factor of an epistermian sequence containing D letters, D distinct letters, has an attract attractor of size D, so the minimum one. And let me continue. This was about palindromic closure. So now I would like to present results concerning attractors and antipalindromic closures. So uh, what an antipalindromic closure means? Let W be a binary word. Uh, then I denote by W to E the shortest antipalindrome with the prefix W. And I call it antipalindromic closure. So it exactly corresponds to palindromic closures. And now uh, examples, if I take 0, 0, 0, then the shortest antipalindrome having 0, 0, 0 as prefix is this one. Then if I take 0, 1, 0, 1, then it already is an antipalindrome, so the antipalindromic closure will keep it. And if I take this one, 0, 0, 1, 0, then the shortest antipalindrome having this as prefix will be this one. And uh, now uh, there's a definition by Aldo De Luca and Alessandro De Luca uh, saying that if we take uh, if we take delta a sequence of letters uh, and if we define u zero to be the empty word and u n plus one to be the antipalindromic closure of u n followed by the corresponding letter from the sequence we can call it again the directive sequence. Then we obtain uh, then the sequence which has uh, all UNs as prefixes is called the pseudo standard sequence. And uh, now what we are able to say about pseudo standard sequences, uh, we have the following theorem with uh, Veronika Hendrichová. Oh, as, as I am sorry, I <laughs> I forgot to write R here. She's Hendrichová. Uh, she was a bachelor student at that time. Now she's a master student in Rennes. 
So uh, we have the following theorem that uh, if V is a non-empty antipalindromic prefix of a pseudo-standard sequence starting with the letter zero, then uh, we consider the longest antipalindromic prefixes followed by each letter. Either they, they can exist, uh, but they uh, do not have to exist. So uh, if such a prefix does not exist, then we put M0 equal to M1. And then uh, what do we have for positions of the attractor? Uh, we have that it is uh, it is formed by M0, M1. So these are the lengths of the longest antipalindromic prefixes followed by 0 and 1. And here's the like the mirror image of M1. So uh, we have three positions here in general. And indeed, uh, this is this attractor is minimal, even if we are over a binary alphabet, it is usually minimal up to some minor exceptions that we are able to describe, but I do not want to get to technical details. So let me now illustrate to uh, understand better the theorem. Uh, let me illustrate it again on a, an a example. So let us consider this, uh, this the, the directive sequence with this prefix. Then uh, U1 is uh, zero, we take zero and we make the antipalindromic closure. And now here in U1, you have uh, the longest antipalindromic prefix followed by zero is the empty word. And there is no antipalindromic prefix followed by one. So as I said, in such a case, it is not written here. I said it just by mouth. I didn't, did not write it down. But in this case, you take M0 equal to M1 and both of them will be zero. So the positions of your attractor will be according to this uh, description. It will be M0, which is the same as M1, so zero. And then it will be the length of the word minus one minus zero, which is this position, this position one. Then uh, we go further. So U2 is constructed in the following way. You take zero, one, and you write down one from the directive sequence, and you make the antipalindromic closure. And now you find the longest uh, antipalindromic prefix followed by zero. It is still the zero, the, the empty prefix. Then you take the longest antipalindromic prefix followed by one, which is this word, the zero one. And uh, it means that in your attractor, there will be position M zero, which is zero, M one, which is the length of zero one, so two. So you will underline this one. And then you will take the mirror position of this one, which is this zero. And this gives you the minimal attractor. And uh, then you continue. So U3 is the is U2. So you copy U2, U2, you write down zero and you make the antipalindromic closure. And now uh, what's the longest antipalindromic prefix followed by one? It is still this one. So you underline this one. You take the mirror image as well. And then there will be uh, this uh, antipalindromic prefix followed by zero. So you take this zero to your, uh, you, you, will, you take this position to your attractor. And you continue like this. So in the next step, again, you copy U3, you add a zero according to the directive sequence and you make the antipalindromic closure and you have uh, this, this antipalindromic prefix is the longest one followed by one. So you have this, uh, this position in your attractor, you have the mirror image position and you have this, this new zero here underlined as well, etc. So it, uh, it goes like that and it gives you the minimal attractor in, in general case. So this was about pseudo standard sequences when you use just uh, anti palindromic closure. And now let me go to the last part about uh, attractors and pseudo palindromic closures. So uh, if I have a binary word W finite and uh, I make either a palindromic or an anti palindromic closure, then I may cl call that pseudo palindromic closure of W. 
And uh, there's a definition again by Aldo De Luca and Alessandro De Luca saying that if you take two sequences, one sequence of letters and one sequence of antimorphisms, then antimorphisms E or R, then uh, you may define U0 to be the empty word and UN plus one to be UN followed by the corresponding letter from the sequence delta. And you make uh, the palindromic, the, the, the pseudo palindromic closure, which corresponds to the antimorphism uh, theta n. And then uh, you will obtain a sequence which has all UNs as prefixes. Uh, you denote this sequence uh, by this symbol, and delta theta uh, is called the directive B sequence of the obtained uh, sequence, and uh, it is called generalized pseudo standard sequence. So you combine this time, you combine both uh, palindromic and anti palindromic closures. And uh, as an example, what uh, can be obtained is the tumor sequence. So if you take delta to be zero and then one repeats infinitely many times, and you take theta to be R, E, R, E, R, E uh, repeated, then uh, the, the generalized pseudo standard sequence with this directive B sequence will be the tumor sequence. And uh, let me introduce, let me uh, show here the first six prefixes of U. So, uh, to check that they indeed are the prefixes of the tumor sequence. So U0 is the empty word. U1, you take a zero from the directive sequence here and you make the R closure. So you obtain zero. Then U2 is, uh, you copy U1, so you copy zero. You take one from your uh, delta uh, sequence and you make the anti-palindromic closure. So it is U1, 0, 1. Then you free, you copy 0, 1. Then uh, you add 1 from delta and you make the R closure. So you obtain this word. Then again, U4, so you copy U3, you copy 0, 1, 1, 0. You read 1 in your uh, delta sequence and you make the anti-palindromic closure. Etc. And uh, again, those ones who know uh, how the how prefixes of the tumor sequence look like, they can check that they indeed are of this form. Uh, so in this case, for generalized pseudo standard sequences, uh, what do we have for results so far? Uh, so since Turmian sequences uh, are, of course, uh, a subclass of generalized pseudo standard sequences, we know uh, that the minimum size attractors of factors of Turmian sequences are uh, of cardinal, are of size two. Uh, then uh, for pseudo standard sequences, you use only anti palindromic closures, but they again make a subclass of pseudo standard sequences. So uh, we are able to say that the antipalindromic prefixes uh, have uh, the uh, attractors of minimum size of size three in general. And uh, concerning the prefixes of the tumor sequence, which is again a pseudo generalized pseudo standard sequence, they're studied by uh, Schaeffer and Shalit, and uh, they are in general, the minimum attractors are of size four. And Francesco, as I mentioned, Francesco Dolce studied all factors of tumor, the tumor sequence, and uh, he showed that uh, they are of size up to five. And now, as a new result, let me uh, go to, to a theorem uh, saying uh, something about pseudo-palindromic prefixes of, again, a subclass of generalized pseudo-standard sequences this time of so-called complementary symmetric rote sequences. And I will, uh, or together with Veronica, uh, we have shown that uh, the minimum size attractors are of size two in this case. Okay, so uh, to present this last result, I have to define a complementary symmetric rote sequence. It is such a binary sequence uh, that have complexity 2n 
and such that its language is closed under the letter exchange. And these uh, rote sequences, complementary symmetric rote sequences, they are closely connected to Sturmian sequences. So here, let me define what I mean by S of U for a finite uh, binary word. Uh, I mean by that uh, summing up consecutive letters modulo two. So if my U is of this form, then S of U will be zero plus zero, which is zero, zero plus one, which is one, then one plus one, which is zero, one plus zero, which is one, zero plus one, that's one, and the last one, one plus zero, which is one. And now Rote, uh, Rote showed that a binary sequence U is a complementary symmetric Rote sequence if and only if uh, the sequence F, S of U is a Sturmian sequence. So there's such a close connection to Sturmian sequences. And uh, moreover, uh, we, we may say that um, as we may define a sequence, a standard complementary symmetric rota sequence. That's a sequence such that S of U is a standard Sturmian sequence. And for such standard uh, complementary symmetric rota sequences, we can observe that the pseudopalindromic prefixes of U correspond exactly to palindromic prefixes of S of U, of the uh, of the Sturmian sequence, which is behind. Now, uh, knowing this connection between pseudopalindromic prefixes of rote sequences and palindromic prefixes of S of U, of the corresponding Sturmian sequence, it was quite uh, easy to see that the smallest, that the, there will be attractors for pseudopalindromic prefixes of size four. And uh, when I described those uh, attractors, then uh, Veronica, uh, she could check with her program that, uh, in fact, uh, not all four positions were needed, but always just two positions of, of those attractors were needed. So uh, this was the way how we uh, could see that probably attractors of size two uh, would be sufficient. And indeed, uh, we could then prove that uh, attractors of size two are sufficient for pseudopalindromic prefixes of uh, complementary symmetric rote sequences. But uh, before presenting the last result, uh, let me say that there's no straightforward connection uh, because one could uh, one could think that there's a very close connection between attractors of palindromic prefixes of Sturmian sequences here and attractors of pseudopalindromic prefixes of rote sequences. But there's not such a connection because uh, let me consider this directive sequence starting with the prefix 0, 1, 0, 0. Now, uh, this factor U is a prefix of, uh, of the Sturmian sequen sequence U of delta, of the Sturmian sequence obtained by the palindromic closures. And now uh, this factor W is, uh, according to the relation between Sturmian sequences and rote sequences, is a prefix of the corresponding rote sequence. So it holds that S of W is equal to U. And now uh, for, the, uh, for the prefix, the palindromic prefix of the Sturmian word, Sturmian sequence, uh, we have uh, two known attractors. So either uh, the one that I call the Prague attractor, uh, which is the attractor uh, corresponding to the length of the largest uh, palindromic prefix followed by one and the largest palindromic prefix followed by zero. So this is the what I call the Prague attractor or the Palermo attractor by Giuseppe Romano and his colleagues. And they uh, showed that uh, it would be these two positions, they form an attractor. But then uh, when you observe uh, the factor zero one in, in the word W, then you can see that it is contained only here in the middle. So each attractor of W uh, has to contain the position four or five, this one or this one. 
And you can observe that there's really not a close connection to these positions or these positions in the Sturmian, uh, in the palindromic prefix of the corresponding Sturmian sequence. So it was not straightforward to get attractors in rota sequences. And in order to do that, uh, we used a result by uh, Blondin Masse and his colleagues uh, saying that each uh, complementary symmetric rota sequence is a generalized pseudo standard sequence. And moreover, uh, we do, do not need to read this uh, result, this theorem in details, but they describe exactly how uh, does a directive B sequence of uh, rota sequences look like. And uh, they described that in terms of uh, factors of length two, uh, they said that uh, the directive B sequence cannot uh, contain uh, such uh, factors of length two. So uh, we are in the situation where uh, we know that the rota sequences are generated by pseudopalindromic closures. And we know how the directive B sequence looks like, and this gives us uh, this gives us the possibility to describe completely the uh, the the minimum size attractors of pseudopalindromic prefixes. And the theorem uh, that we have is the following one. So assume you have a complementary symmetric rota sequence standard with this directive B sequence. And then what happens, we will uh, describe at, at, uh, minimum size attractors of pseudopalindromic prefixes, uh, which correspond to UNs, and uh, such that we consider only UN containing both letters, zero and one. And we have the following three cases. So the first case is for UN being an antipalindrome, then, Con, um, denote delta n minus one by a. Search for the longest antipalindromic prefix of u n followed by the opposite letter, and then your attractor is of uh, this form. So it is the length of u i and u n minus one. The another possible situation is that u n is a palindrome. Delta n minus one is a letter a. The previous uh, prefix was an antipalindrome, and you search for uj being the longest palindromic prefix followed by, again, the opposite letter, and the attractor is of this form. And there's the, the easiest possible situation when there are two uh, uh, palindromes, consecutive palindromes, then the attractor of un minus one is the same as the one of un. So in my last two minutes, let me illustrate this. So for instance, if you consider the directive B sequence starting with this prefix, then U1, U0, they, they contain just one letter and U3 is of this form 0, 0, then you read one here and you make the antipalindromic closure. So what you get, uh, your, fa your factor U3 is an antipalindrome. The letter delta N minus one is this one. So you search for the longest antipalindromic prefix followed by zero, which is the empty word. So you will have uh, this zero, this uh, the zero here, and then the length of U N minus one. So uh, this position in your attractor. So let me just summarize that, that in fact, uh, we were again able to describe attractors in terms of the longest palindromic or antipalindromic prefixes followed by, uh, followed by uh, specific letters. Okay, so this was the last result for rota sequences. And now uh, to summarize which uh, problems remain open, uh, it is the problem to find minimal attractors of pseudopalindromic prefixes of all generalized pseudostandard sequences because we did it only for rota sequences. We believe that in general, attractors of size four are sufficient for pseudopalindromic prefixes. Then another open problem is to find minimal attractors of prefixes or factors of complementary symmetric rota sequences because we did it only for pseudopalindromic prefixes. And the last open problem, what about 
uh, generalized pseudo standard sequences over larger alphabets. So when you use uh, when you use antimorphisms over larger alphabets and you do again uh, the pseudo palindromic closures. Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs> thank you, Lupka. Uh, does anyone have uh, have any questions? Um, I have just oh, uh, Giuseppe. Hi, Heron. Hi, Womira. Thanks uh, for the talk. It was, uh, was very nice. And I had a question about your last slide uh, mm -hmm. on the uh, on the open um, problems. Uh, so about this conjecture on having a string attractor of size 4 <laughs> that is sufficient for the pseudo-polynomic prefixes. Is this uh, an observ like an experimental observation, or uh, do you have some kind of conjecture to say that? Uh... Uh, it's not really a conjecture. It's uh, more. It's more or less just uh, observation uh, based on some uh, experiments, computer experiments, and uh, we have a feeling that uh, nothing worse than mm. uh, than the case for the tumor sequence can happen. That uh, in fact the uh, the construction for the tumor sequence is the one uh, which is uh, yeah which needs the the attractors of the largest size mm -hmm, in this okay. case. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I'll look into it. Thanks. Are there any other questions? All right. Uh, if not, uh, thank you again, Luca. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming to the seminar today. Um, as usual, um, our next talk will be uh, two weeks from now, um, and uh, next uh, our next speaker will be uh, Herman uh, Goulewele. So uh, I'll see you all uh, in two weeks. <laughs>